today we're going to talk about a condition in rheumatology called granulomatosis with polyangiitis. It's a big term, often we call it GPA for short. GPA is a chronic autoimmune inflammatory disease. It is in a category of conditions which we call vasculitis. From the term, you can see that vasculitis means, well, vascule is the vessels, blood vessel, and any word that ends with itis usually means inflammation. So vasculitis means inflammation of blood vessels. That inflammation leads to poor blood flow or can be completely blocked blood flow and can also result in bleeding. Vasculitis can affect anyone so GPA can affect anyone, although more common, uh, older than 40, but certainly at any age. And important to note, it's not an inherited condition, and it's not infectious either. You can't catch it from someone else. It's also important to note that this term, GPA, or granulomatosis with polyangiitis, is a relatively new term over the last 10 plus years as this condition used to be called Wegener's granulomatosis, but we're going away from eponym names, meaning naming conditions after individuals. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis is inflammation most often of the small, very tiny blood vessels. That inflammation, because we have blood vessels everywhere, can affect a variety of different places in the body. That includes the nose or sinuses with GPA, throat, lungs, kidneys, but can also include skin, joints, heart, really anywhere because we have blood vessels anywhere. But there are, these are areas that we would see more commonly with GPA. And because of that, there are many symptoms that we can see present for people who have GPA. So nosebleeds or a stuffy nose, crustiness around the nose. Some people, if it goes on, a hole can actually develop uh, in the wall between your nostrils. You can get a dent in the bridge of your nose. You can have eye problems, ear problems, mouth problems, coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain. It could be less specific, fevers, night sweats, loss of appetite, fatigue. Certainly, as with many rheumatology conditions, you can have joint pain and swelling. You can have skin rashes and problems and kidney problems as well. And this is certainly not a complete list. How is GPA diagnosed? So important usually to have a rheumatologist involved. As with most of our conditions, talking to you, doing a good physical exam are the most important key components of making a diagnosis. There are tests that can fit, but not necessarily are always diagnostic of GPA. So your rheumatologist, your doctor will usually do a number of blood tests. A lot of them are kind of common blood tests. So looking at a complete blood count, doing tests, looking at your kidney and function, looking at markers of inflammation. There is an antibody test called an ANCA test or anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody which can be done which is associated with GPA so a positive ANCA test and a particular type of positivity can more suggest GPA in someone with the right history and exam although I should note a positive ANCA without the right history and physical exam does not necessarily mean someone has a vasculitis. In some people, will, the rheumatologist will actually call the condition ankyovasculitis as opposed to GPA. There's a few different types of ankyovasculitis, and sometimes it may be hard to say it's GPA specifically or the family of ankyovasculitis. Fortunately, treatment is pretty similar across the board. So in addition to blood tests, urine tests will be done. And again, this is often looking at kidney function. Imaging a variety of different areas of the body can be helpful, but more commonly looking at chest imaging, be it an x-ray, a CT scan, as well as sinuses. 
And the best way to diagnose GPA after having all this, if possible, and sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, is to do a small biopsy of a, the part of the body that we think might be involved to be able to more definitively prove that we have the right diagnosis. So for instance, if we thought there was kidney involvement, doing a kidney biopsy may be an important test. As you may be able to tell, GPA is a very serious condition and therefore needs very serious uh, treatment. It really is based around immunomodulating. So modulating how the immune system works because clearly it wasn't working well in that it caused the condition in the first place. So it's not necessarily that it needs to go up or down, it just needs to be different. Because of the seriousness of this condition, the vast majority of individuals will receive corticosteroids. Steroids um, that uh, are given right away because they can act very fast and can settle this the, much quicker than any of our other medications. For many individuals, the steroids may be given intravenously in very high doses and then step down to still good high doses, but oral dosing by mouth, prednisone, for a number of weeks, if not months, but slowly lowering the dose over time as we wait for other medications to take effect. And we've listed here a number of medications which you might use, and we have videos on most of these specifically. Which medication is used really depends on the severity of the disease. For someone who may have more limited GPA, methotrexate or azathioprine might be used at the very beginning. For someone who has more serious uh, disease and involvement, cyclophosphamide or rituximab may be options. Years ago, before we had a number of these treatment options, the prognosis for GPA was actually quite poor. Today, the vast majority of individuals have a very good and complete recovery, although depending on a number of things, longer term complications can occur. We talked about sometimes damage to that nasal septum can happen, or sometimes even feeling chronic sinus irritation. Kidney failure, if we don't act quick enough or treatment isn't effective, can happen. Hearing loss or vision loss can occur. You may end up with chronic lung disease or heart disease as well. So this is clearly a very serious, serious condition. Uh, rheumatologists can be very effective at treating this, and the sooner we're able to treat it, the better. For more information on vasculitis, for any rheumatic disease, or some of the treatment options we talked about, please feel free to watch some of our other videos or visit our website at Alberta Rheumatology.